Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. I just wanted Charlemagne to see his mask. That's all. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. all. It's, you know, oh, he just God. wanted you to see his mask, Charlemagne. <laughs> Congratulations, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I'm not, I'm not a hater. Congratulations. Oh, you know, he's wearing a 49 Congratulations. Mask. Congratulations. You'll be home with us after this weekend. Oh, man. I don't know, man. We you beat, sound like a hater. We beat Green Bay a lot. <laughs> you sound like a hater. Like hate. <laughs> we got Ryan Davis in the building. <laughs> Now you know he's 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 a diehard Cowboys fan. Yeah, man. So how did it feel when your your Forty Nineers beat the Cowboys? And I'm sure you heard him talking all this ish. Why Cowboys is it about beating us? Why can't it be? How did it feel when your team won? Because beat they beat the someone to win. Oh, I've never liked y'all. You know what it is? It's just like, what do you mean? It's always a little extra. People love to hate the Cowboys. It, it's y'all's fault, man. Yes. Yeah. It's y'all's fault. Because every year is y'all's year. That's right. And next year, <laughs> next year I'm going to be sitting right here saying we won, we going to the Super Bowl. It's ridiculous, so How's man. it going, Ryan Davis? Oh, it's been going good, man. Now, you're in town right now because you're performing at Caroline's over the weekend. Yeah, man. Tell the people who is Ryan Davis. Who is Ryan Davis? Uh, Ryan Davis is probably the best comic of this generation, man. Talk, man. Honestly. Talk. about himself in third person. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he asked it that way, so nah, man. Um... Mostly, man, uh, comedy enthusiast, man. I've always wanted to do this, man. I still kind of can't believe this is my life, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, social media, I use social media to kind of catapult my comedy career. And I'm not a big fan of social media, but, you know, it was a necessary <laughs> tool. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things to do is watch you duck in the smoke on the 5150 show. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, Corey is... don't give a f Fuck. Corey, yeah, right. this nigga, Corey, Corey, be, Corey don't care nothing about somebody's career, dog. I'm like, nigga, I'm still on the way up. Could you please not set me up to be canceled? Love that dude, though, but he, yeah, he don't give a fuck. But that's honest, though. Do, they, do people even give you backlash for that, though? Just even. Oh, yeah, them? they do. They were like, oh, they go automatically, oh, Ryan's scared. Ryan will wear the dress. I was like, how I end up in the dress? Because <laughs> I, I don't want to answer his Would question. Would you wear a dress? No, okay, no. Just asking. Nah. Did you see what Steve Harvey said about how he, was, he doesn't want to do another special because of cancel culture? He said, uh, sponsors <laughs> and all of that, the only person who can say what he wants is Dave Chappelle because he doesn't have to worry about. Sponsors and networks. I don't know, man. I um I say what I want, so I don't know. So my thing is, there's a there's a way to say stuff. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes comics use that as a, and I'm not saying Steve Harvey is, but I feel like a lot of comics use that as an excuse not to do the work. Mm -hmm. You know, any joke you do, you just got to do it so well that the people that you're talking about laugh at it too. Mm -hmm. So do the work. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make you nervous at all, like that you that because this is a cancel culture. They'll cancel you in a minute. It's not yeah. real. Yeah. It's just outrage. It's, it's more outrage than actual yeah. cancellation. Yeah, but that'll ruin your sponsorship, your advertisings, and all that. Yeah, it depends. Well, let's just say, let's just say what you want. Say this: mm -hmm. I don't want to lose my money. <laughs> I don't want to play with my money but like disclaimer. that. <laughs> but it ain't because again, you know what would Steve Harvey have to say to get canceled? It's Steve Harvey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he would have to say something ridiculous <laughs> to get canceled. By the way, they canceled Steve for actions. They canceled Steve. Well, well you know, I, we use the word cancel, but they were outraged when he met with Trump. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, so it's like it, it wasn't even. Yeah, something they, he tried, said. they tried, and now he a judge. Right. It doesn't stop. That's you right. know what I mean? That's right. It doesn't stop. It cancel. Who has been canceled? Let's just keep it real. Who? Um, I mean, really nobody, but people, I mean, like, if you, I guess when you go to prison, but even still, that don't stop nothing, Even really. still, R. Kelly getting his streams. Yeah. And there's people yeah. that support him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 No yeah. one. Bill yeah. Cosby was canceled for a minute. Yeah. But he's still rich. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that only helped, that only hurt, like, Elvin. <laughs> when they canceled him, nah, Elvin on power now. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But that's the only person I saw <laughs> get hurt from canceling Bill Cosby. Now, did you see Ti doing stand up? No, I I ain't seen that. Play it for him. Play it for him. you. Got to play it. Well, for we don't Ryan. know if it's really stand up. I think, but if he's on I, the I stage, talking, I think Ti talk. was just doing yeah, Ti yeah, on yeah, stage. Uh, but Killer Mike did a set at my show in no, uh, Atlanta. Didn't. Yes, he did. How was it? It was. Hey, he was actually funny. <laughs> Doc, Mike is funny, man. Really? Yeah. You can tell he was nervous, though. He was wrapping the mic cord around his arm, terrified. <laughs> I got to hit funny. my brother today and see what the hell going <laughs> on. Boy. Why are Mike and T.I. doing stand up? <laughs> yeah. so what's going on? Mike, man? What I, I think it was on Mike's like bucket list. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And nah, he, he got up and did it. He was actually pretty funny, man. I couldn't he had believe a set it. and everything. Yeah, so he, nah. So this he, was pre planned. This wasn't. Like, I told him, I was. he was like, man, I'm thinking about going up there. I was like, don't say that to me because I'll put you up. Mm. 
And uh, he he went up, but he he made sure I stayed on stage with him <laughs> the whole time, just in case everything went left. But nah, it was good. It is an amazing craft, though. But one thing you realize when you up there, when it's just you one on one on versus the crowd, like just you versus the crowd, that shit is for the lead that to the professional. Yeah, lead nah, to the man. Professional. Yeah, people like, see. I'm gonna tell you who's a, actually a decent stand up that actually does do it. Hmm. Tank. I heard that. Okay, really? yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah, well, he's pretty funny. He's pretty funny. Yeah, wow. I would have never believed that. But it's something you have to work at because I don't think anybody could get on stage and just hop up there and just be funny. No, I don't think so. Because there's a lot nah. of technical things. Yeah. I had did this show on Facebook called Mastery of Comedy where I had some comics teaching like up and coming comics just some techniques. Yeah. Because there's things that physically you have to do on stage. Also, it's not just what you say, but it's also your delivery. It's also like where the mic is and like you said, like the fiddling with the cord. Yeah. yeah. Timing. Yeah, and you know you gotta be brave, man. So what was one of your worst shows? Envy always oh, wanted to do I that. Always wanna, he always wanted to focus on the worst. That worst show. See how negative man. people are. He yeah. yeah. to the best show. Why not I was his going best? to the positive show <laughs> after, but I hey. want to go to the the worst show. Nah, I remember. <laughs> See man. how he remembers. I got traumatized. Him. Man, my crush was in the front row. Oh. No. <laughs> Ooh. I was, and, and I'm telling you, it was one of them days where I just, I was cocky. I knew it. That's what why that? I invited everybody what out. It's, it? it's this spot. In, uh, North Carolina, shout out to Tito Koontz, is called the Omega House. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's it's the uh, fraternity house. They've been running comedy there for over 20 years, like the last Friday of every month, mm-hmm. right? And then I went to do the show, and when I tell you I was bombing, and what <laughs> made it even worse is that it was like five people on the show, and everybody was getting standing O's. <laughs> and I, so it wasn't the audience. I had nobody to blame but me. And I could see the girl in the front row like, oh, this nigga. I was like, oh, yeah, I lost her. So, this, you, didn't, so you didn't get to hit or nothing? Man, nothing. Nigga, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I hope she don't, I hope she forget me. <laughs> I don't think. What was so bad, though? Yeah, what, what, what went wrong? So yeah. Um, like like you said, there's a lot of things that go into comedy, man. And if you have, if you come on the stage arrogant, people read that on you. Yeah. And like with me, my particular brand of comedy, man, it's it's way more mainstream. So if I'm in front of niggas, then niggas is like, humble yourself, nigga. You know, you mm-hmm. coming before us, you got something to prove to us. We ain't got nothing to prove to you. And I and I did. I kind of. I kind of was pretty arrogant that day, man, and they and they humbled me. So basically, real. when she saw you on Insecure, she was like, "I remember him." Oh I yeah, went on a date no, I did him. get the DM though after Insecure. <laughs> 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 Glad you kept pushing. Hey, hey I'm proud of you. I, 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 <laughs> hey, what was your best show? Now, positive. What was the best show? You remember? There you the, go. The, the best oh. show you did. So loud, crazy. It was one of those moments you might even tear it a little bit. Oh man, I have a lot of those, man. I have a lot of those because I love this. One of my uh, memorable shows is uh, I did New Year's with Gary Owen. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like 6,000 people, man. And it was the first time I had done an audience that big. And uh, I killed killed pretty pretty hard, man. And uh, Gary and his uh, ex-wife came back mm-hmm. to the uh, room to give me my props. And he was repeating jokes that I said on stage or whatever. And these are people that I never even thought I'd meet. Mm-hmm. So... You know, and I did a show with Dion Cole, and he was like, "Man, your pen is magnificent. You do jokes that I, I wish I had thought of that joke." And that's like the biggest compliment from somebody who's, you know what I mean, great at the craft like that. So those moments I remember the most. Has anyone ever taken your joke somewhere? Oh yeah, people always steal. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? The, is that it, common in the comedy world? It just seems like yeah, yeah everybody says them. it. Is. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but you also common. might have the same idea as someone too. Yeah. Lateral thinking is a thing. You got to remember, you got to know what a stolen joke is and what like-minded thinking is. If I do a joke about my girl going through my phone, I'm not the only nigga that girl and went through his mm-hmm. phone. Mm-hmm. That's, that don't belong to you. Like, it has to be very specific to be yours. Gotcha. That's why you try to keep it as close to the chest as possible. If you really talking about your life and really your experiences, then it makes it easy to decipher whether somebody's stealing your joke or not. What is she fine? Mm-hmm. Oh no, I don't do jokes like that. That's too okay. common. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, mm-hmm. man, I, I stick my writing. I make sure that whenever you see me live, those are Ryan Davis jokes. Ain't gotcha. nobody doing material like that. When I s- literally say I'm the best comic of this generation, it's really the goal. Mm-hmm. If I feel like a joke can be done by somebody else, I throw it away. You know what I mean? I want to stand out. I want to stand out beyond all of that. And I believe we in a time right now 
where quality isn't as as appreciated as it once was because there's so much out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's no incentive for being great. So I have to push myself to be great. Gotcha. Yeah. I wonder if, um, you know, we laugh at so much stuff online, like just regular everyday stuff, things that people don't even mean to be funny. I wonder how is it to try to be funny now? Does yeah. it feel forced? Um, not Stand up is so different. Mm -hmm. You know, um, all the stuff you see on social media, you can't get away with 98% of that on stage. It's right just up. a completely different thing. You know what I mean? On stage, you're you're in front of people who don't really know you. Y'all don't have, you know, most of the stuff that people laugh on social media is because they relate to something. Mm -hmm. And you're watching it. You can, mm -hmm. they can paint a whole picture for you. You can use a whole bunch of stuff you edit and all of that. Stand up. I got to be in the, on the stage in front of you guys for the first time and get y'all to understand my point of view without us ever having a conversation before. Mm -hmm. right. And do it in such a way that you get a laugh out of it. It's way more difficult there. And because of that, you know, it, it's a lot harder and it takes a lot more time. I don't think it's, I don't think uh, social media ruins stand up at all. Mm -hmm. I saw Joe Coy performance. I, I agree with what you said about that because his experience is so different than mine. You know, he's Filipino, growing up in Hawaii. And so to hear him, it's like a storytelling, autobiographical. And I was able to laugh because he had to explain things to me. And there's things I could relate to, but culturally it was so different for me. But it was funny to hear his experience with his family. Right. And if somebody was to just tell you those experiences, it isn't funny. Right. But he finds a way to get you, even though you don't know, you've never, you don't know anything about mm -hmm. this. He introduced the information to you and then he presents it in such a way that you can relate to it. I think that's the that's the key to stand up, man, is getting strangers to relate to something that they may not even know about or never even seen before. That's why I like to go see people who who aren't just necessarily black. I went to go see Ali Wong's hilarious. Oh, she's hilarious. You know what I mean? Actually yeah. had me sitting there mad as hell. You yeah. know what I mean? Because <laughs> the way she talks about her husband and marriage and stuff like that. But she was great. She's great. What do you what do you mean when you say you're a, a, a your ma your material's mainstream? What does that mean? Um Mainstream is, for me, it's like no matter who walks in, like you said, you go see Ali Wong ap can appeal to anybody. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. material appeals to everybody. You just have to, you know, be willing to accept it. Mm -hmm. um, like, I used to struggle doing black rooms whenever I was uh, first starting, and that used to bug me. It was like, man, I can't relate to my own people in a way, there, but there's a skill involved. There's a... The thing with black people, There's a lot, lot of black comedians that go through that too. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, like Dave Chappelle. Chappelle wasn't yeah. embraced by black people early on. Exactly. And Chris Rock too, I feel like. And Chris Rock, and those are two I of don't my know about favorites. Rock, no, I've heard, I've Rock definitely was. heard people I know say that yeah. they can't relate to Chris Rock. I know plenty of black people yeah. that early don't on. Play I feel like I, Rock was, could. I feel like early on Rock was more than Chappelle. He didn't do well. Rock didn't. I don't think Rock did well on Def Jam either. Him or Chappelle. I don't remember him on Def Jam. See, so funny. you don't even remember. I just remember the stand-up specials. <laughs> he's so yeah. funny to me because he's from Brooklyn, from Best Side. It's my type of comedy, also. But for I some people, that's too. not their type of comedy. Hannibal Burroughs too has had, has problems in, in black. Oh, I seen Hannibal walk off the stage in the black. Room. <laughs> yeah. No, no, straight up. I seen Hannibal. You, that, that was it. Was the Michael show. show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, saw, I saw something like that. He was like, "What do you say? You say working, huh?" He said, "Just go right Have a good night. Just, yeah. Just right up. Yeah. So I just I had to learn it, man. And uh, big shout out to one of my OGs. His name is Sean Jones out of South Carolina. He took me down to the Comedy House in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Which man, in you Columbia. from South Carolina? You know what yeah, it is. Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it there isn't. You gotta you gotta do what you you gotta do the job down there, man. And I went down there and I ate it. Uh, we did like seven shows in one weekend. And the first three shows, man, I was struggling through it, man. And he just kept talking to me in the green room. I got to watch him and understand that, man. The the way I ended up getting them to be being able to rock a black crowd is because I just started being honest up front. Black people really want you to be authentic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's that's really what it is. And if you're, even if you're witty or clever with your comedy, it, you can't be like, oh, I know you guys, you know, may not. I hate when somebody uh, introduce you as, you got to pay attention, this comic is really smart. Don't tell the people <laughs> that they may not get the humor. Let right. them experience it. Yeah. And, just, and I came out 
And the way that I speak wasn't necessarily like everybody in the room. And I was just like, keep it real. A lot of y'all probably like, who's this Carlton Banks ass nigga on stage right now? But, you know, listen, I, I might got something for you. And whenever we address the elephant in the room, then niggas is like, all right, let's see what you got. How did you get into comedy? What was your start? What was it that made you say, you know what, I'm funny to try this? Uh, I never thought I was. Um, I love comedy so much, and I respected it so much. I, I looked at those dudes as superheroes, man. Like who? Oh, man, Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Patrice O'Neal. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, yeah, um, D.L. Hughley, yep. you know, Bernie Mac, the whole Kings of Comedy. When you saw good. Kings of Comedy, no, I don't think anybody was looking at that like, I can do that. Nope. Yeah, you know what I mean? You never no. want to feel like that. Yeah, you never, that. nah. <laughs> so, you know, um, Kevin Hart was the one who finally pushed me over the edge, man. He did Let Me Explain, and he sold out Madison Square Garden. And at the end, he's crying because he's one of the few to sell out Madison Square Garden. This dude had a dream, and he's made it to the pinnacle mm -hmm. of that. And I'm sitting here watching this dude, like, make it, not even to the finish line, but to a point maybe he he thought he wasn't going to reach. And I was like, man, Ryan, have you even tried to chase a dream? Have you ever tried to accomplish something that you wanted to accomplish in that way? And uh, I got on stage three days later. I love that story, but I don't know how I feel about, uh you know, Kevin making you be the one to step up on that stage, but everybody else made you feel like you couldn't do it. Nah, it, was, it wasn't it was because uh, I didn't look at what Kevin was doing and going, I can do that. I wanted to feel like that. Mm -hmm. Cry. The way, you yeah. Got you, got you. You got to try. Yeah, oh, I wanted okay, okay. to I feel yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made me see it differently than everybody else, man. Kevin Hart gives great interviews, man. Yeah, he does. Oh, he's the best. Yeah. What, were you, what were you doing before you tried the stand-up? I was a pharmacy technician. <laughs> There's always this, like, rags the riches story. Of, like, man, I, I was okay. poor. And then, no, I was fine. <laughs> no, that's that 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 fine. But that's hard, too, to give up something that's lucrative. Yeah, no, it was, man, because it's like, because it's the great unknown, man. Mm -hmm. You give away something, you walk away from something that when you're comfortable mm -hmm. to try something that's completely uncomfortable, man, there are no guarantees in this at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And you don't get paid a lot if it takes a while to... You get gotta... paid. You pay <laughs> To do this job in the beginning, people. yeah, it costs you. Yeah, to, you think of comedians, they give you a hundred dollars. You got to bring thirty people. You got to drink five <laughs> two drink drinks. minimum. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. man, I I remember I got into the business of comedy because of that. I did a show my very first time getting on stage. Like fifty people came out to see me, and they all paid to get in. They all paid for food, <laughs> drinks, everything, and I paid to get on stage that day. You was like, Wait that's crazy. I was like. <laughs> I think these niggas owe me $1,500. <laughs> it cost $1,500? No, I'm just saying, oh. I started doing the math of between the ticket pay. and then yeah, the food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then James. when I paid, I was like, these niggas made $1,500 and $10 off my money. <laughs> get to that yeah, to get <laughs> <laughs> off of me. So I, I created a, a show. I'm from Concord, North Carolina. I created a show called Finally Something to Do in Concord. There ain't much to do at home. <laughs> Concord. Yeah. It's right by Charlotte. Right by Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. So I, uh, Blackson came and did my show. Wow. Yeah, man. It, it, it's so little to do at home. People kept believe, didn't believe that he was coming. <laughs> That's how crazy it is. I was like, nah, man. I do. I was doing a show with him. He's he's coming. They're like, man, you don't know no Michael Black. So Damn that's man. the that's the city that I live in. You know. I don't think people realize coming from the Carolinas how we didn't have any of that entertainment. -wise. No, like nothing. No music. No comedy. We didn't have nobody to look to to be like, oh, I can go do that. Yeah. So when I see you and I see the baby or. Anybody that's from the Carolinas is just like, yo, you got to salute them. I'm telling I remember when I first, when everything first popped off of me and I went to the radio to promote my show because the show sold out, I added another show, mm -hmm. so I had to go do promotion. And the baby was sitting there on the couch trying to get his music played. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, was that Power 98? Um, no, nah, I think it was at 92.7, and my man uh, Chewy, Chewy was there. He was hanging out with yeah, Chewy. Yeah, salute to Chewy. Yeah, and... Uh, Chewy, man, that, man, that's a that's a good dude, man. And then he was like, "Yo, I got this mixtape out coming out called Baby Talk Five. You know what I mean? Check it out, man. I'm telling you, I was like, dog, I know who you are. Like, mm -hmm. you hide around here. I know who you are, man. I'm gonna check it out. And he had this song called Today off of that. And I heard it. I was like, oh, this nigga gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. I just had a feeling, and man, it didn't take long. I say. Two years after that, maybe we had All Star Weekend in Charlotte, mm -hmm. and everybody came to Charlotte, and you just heard blank, blank, 
that, that mixtape everywhere, mm -hmm. and then he dropped Baby on Baby, and it was over. Yeah. Out of here. Out of here. I saw Donnell Rollins at his special um, in Charlotte. I was there for yeah. it. And the baby was there also. Yeah. Charlotte's a great place to do comedy. Beautiful city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I moved back. I just moved back there from L.A., man. Smart motherfucker. I bet your house crazy. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't got it yet, but yeah, we've been looking. <laughs> we've been, yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you. Chico Bean called me stupid every time he would see me Why? in L.A. Because he stayed in North Carolina. Yeah, 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 he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. stay there and get your house Absolutely. and do everything. Like, every time he come to L.A. for any reason, he's like, see, he's still out here. Stupid. Man. What made you leave L.A.? There's no reason to be there anymore. <laughs> uh, listen, all uh, all auditions are done digitally. No one's calling you in to do anything. Like, my name is good enough to where if somebody really wants me to audition for a role or wants me to go out there to see it, I'm doing well enough. I can just fly right out How there. How did it's the Insecure role happen? Because you know that's my oh, show. Oh, man, I love that show. I never thought I'd be on that show. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Prentice Penny, man, the showrunner, man. Mm -hmm. He actually saw my audition and he was just like that dude, you know what I mean? And he was he gave me a shot and then I just had one line on season four and I was like, Cool, I got to do the little one line. What was the one line? Uh, you gonna eat your sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> I got hair in mine. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a few more this season. You had the he, beach scene, the car yeah, scene. Yeah. So when they uh, they <laughs> called me, they were like, "You uh, you ready to do Insecure again?" I was like, "I don't have a reoccurring character." And they were like, "You do now." And I I was like, "Cool, man. I'm I'm down to say another line." Do you really and, like Jason Derulo that much in real life? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, I, saying, nah. uh, I always like when getting ready for that role. I was like, man, I wonder what a what would a Jason Derulo fanatic really be like. So I tried to, I, like, I, I was wondering myself, would you ad lib, and I was like, did he picked. I wasn't he picked Jason Derulo to they write that. They no, they wrote Jason okay. Derulo. So it's it's some stuff that's ad libbed, and then there's some mm -hmm. stuff that's in the script. And it's just it's just up to the actor to bring it to life. And I didn't realize how fun acting can be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, Issa Rae, man, she creates an environment to where, you know, you can really, really have fun. Mm -hmm. and, and when doing something like that, like her, Yvonne and Natasha, they made it really easy for me to be comfortable in the space because I'm not an actor. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, I didn't ever really feel uncomfortable on set with them, man. And. That out of all the projects that I've done, all the things that I've seen, I've never seen so many black people on a set that's dope. in my life. And uh, it was a couple of people told me, don't get used to that. That's not what what they're doing over there at Insecure was special, mm -hmm. you know, and man, I'm just grateful to be able to do it because to me, that show is legendary. I know, 100%. I'm going to miss that yeah. show so much, man. That's one of my, and you were on another one of my favorite shows, Curb Your oh, Enthusiasm. Curb, <laughs> Curb yes. man, I, that was great. You know, uh, I made Larry David break character. That So <laughs> couldn't nobody tell me nothing. This dude's been doing improv. That show been improv. And then whenever he broke character and was like, kid, you're funny, I was like, ain't nobody tell me I'm not funny. What happened? Yeah, Larry what David happened? said it. Yeah, so we, I was doing the, uh, we were doing the TSA. He was going through the airport, passing everybody, and he got to the front of the line, and he saw two black people there. And he was like, oh, no, y'all can go in front of me. But they weren't together. He just assumed they were together. So yeah. So he goes through trying to explain, you know, why he isn't racist. And then whenever he uh, comes to me, I'm the TSA agent. I told him he'd been uh, chosen for a random check. And he's like, I know what you're doing. You you because of what's going on. I was like, yeah, I'm their cousin. And um, yeah. <laughs> and when I said that, he broke character. And we had the car. I was like, damn, I wish they had kept that. But he was like, he was like, nah, you're funny, kid. I was like, all right, man. Larry Davis. The way he you, acts man. on Curb Your Enthusiasm, I feel like I would never want to say anything to him in real life because he's so... <laughs> man, it's hard to stand in front of that. Mm -hmm. Like, when you see it on TV and it's funny, when he's right in front of you mm -hmm. making those faces, it, it's really te it's really <laughs> testing your ability to keep a straight face, for real. I, I wanted to ask you about the upbringing in North Carolina. What oh, made yeah. it to where you... um you, you didn't feel comfortable, I guess, performing in front of black crowds? What do you think that was? Was it something that happened growing up or... You know, quite fit in with black people, or what was it? Nah, the crazy part is, grew up with nothing but black people. And then whenever I got to be about 23 years old, I moved to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really around a lot of black people. I still was. Like, the majority of my friends will always be black. But it was like, 
I, the way that I dress started to change. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I always spoke this way, but it was always it's always more accepted with a hoodie on than it is <laughs> with, some with, with some dickies on <laughs> and some sperries. You know what I mean? Some what? S- sperries, boat yeah. shoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think <laughs> yeah. At that time, niggas was just like it. I felt like an outsider if you didn't know me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that made it. That made it difficult. I don't know, man. Maybe the way I was saying nigga wasn't authentic to them. I don't know. <laughs> How do you see me hear it? Nigga. Ah, it's an R on the end. It ain't. But it's, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't. But it wasn't authentic. They, it, I didn't, and I think I wasn't. I think I wasn't being authentic, man. I think I was so, I was so robotic in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I was writing these jokes and I wanted the jokes to be worded a certain way that I wasn't bringing me to it. Mm -hmm. When you're nervous, you just wanna do, you're like, I wanna make sure I say the words. But I now my writing, when I write a joke now, it's more of an idea. Mm-hmm. I, this is what I want to talk about. This is the punchline. How I get there, I just want to get there or, organically. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, there was also a rumor that you died. Oh, yeah, man. They <laughs> yeah. stay killing me off. Where that rumor came from? Um, <laughs> what was it, Young Shelton? The show Young yes, Sheldon? It was another Ryan yeah, Davis. Yeah, so a, a, a dude, uh, Ryan Davis died. So fat white dude died. <laughs> died. Yeah. yeah. He died, and nobody did their research. <laughs> they just Googled Ryan Davis, and I guess I'm the first one to pop up. Um, and they killed me. They were like, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Davis died. They talked about it on Young Sheldon. I found out at my show. <laughs> Somebody was like, no, I just came to make sure you was really still here. <laughs> Hey. So the other day you had died. Hey, black people are so funny, man. We know <laughs> our people. Show. Yeah. Like yesterday, uh, it was whenever. What's the brother that died? The Vogue editor. Oh, Andre Leon Talley. I told Duval. I said, man, Andre Leon Talley died. He texted me back the next morning. Talk about, man, I thought you talking about Leon from the Five Heartbeats. <laughs> oh my God, he took like, one day. Up. One day. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy, man. It wasn't even the first day. No. I love it, man. I, it was. It was crazy. A lot of people wanted me to like go out and address it or whatever. I was like, nah, nah. I, I think people can see I'm alive. Yes, right. I just let it, I'll just let it do what it's it does. It's a common That's name, crazy. too. Yeah, very common. Mm-hmm. Very common. It took me a while to be the first Ryan Davis to pop up on Google. <laughs> how, do you, how do you incorporate being a father into your set? Oh, man, I, I'm i just honest about it, man. I, uh, shoo, I have a son that's uh, that's possibly on the spectrum. I talk about that. In my set, I talk about what it is. Maybe autism. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe. What do you say? Why you say you don't know yet for sure? Four. Cause, cause it's one of those things where the doctors is like nine. We like, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so the doctors are telling you what you like. Nah. Nah, nigga, I ain't never met no nigga like this. This is. <laughs> <laughs> What makes him like that? What, what, what makes him like that? Man, he don't talk, man. Man, come on, right? <laughs> yeah, yo, man. Does he talk a lot? <laughs> that nigga love me to death, but don't uh, talk. Uh, you oh, see man. the excitement when I walk in the door, but then he just... So he says nothing at four? Nah, he say nothing. Like, he started talking now, though. <laughs> He's, he does. He says something. I don't really understand it, but... Just take time. Some kids are all I, Hey, I, I, I believe you. He's probably gifted, man. He is gifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah my yeah. son, he better be. He yeah. Was, I, to be honest with you, I like people that talk less nowadays. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he might know something we don't know. But now, so, do you do you do you t- treat them differently because of anything or? Oh no. Nah. Okay. Nah, you know how black households are. Everybody get the same work. What do you, it's not. <laughs> we're not gonna treat you. We're gonna treat you any different. You better. You better not let it hinder you. <laughs> yeah, you better stay with everybody else. Yeah. So uh, now I talk about what it is to be a son, like with my parents. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. I talk about society. I talk about you know what's going on in the world. I talk about relationships. I talk about every. I like. I'm really into doing social commentary and just talking about the world in general. That I don't really. That's why I don't waste my time with like jokes that everybody else could do. I, I want people to leave my show also talking about it in the car. Mm-hmm. Like, hey man, he was funny, but. The point he made about this, yo, that was really poignant. I, I really want that for my comedy career, man. I think that will make me last the test of time. I don't really care about popularity as much because it's the substance. Like, 
Like, you know the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Uh-huh. That movie bombed. Which one? Not the original. The original. Bombed. With Gene, um, what's the Gene, Gene Wilder. Wilder. Bombed. Really? Nobody watches it. You would never know that, that today. That's great. I love I mean, the we book see it and all the movie. time on TV. We all, know, yeah. yeah. They made their money back. You make it over time if mm-hmm. you're if what you do is quality. Hocus Pocus show every uh, Halloween. They've been showing that that movie bomb. Mm-hmm. No one would ever know. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like I'm not worried about the accolades in the moment mm-hmm. or the popularity in the moment. Will this last the test of time? When people talk about comedy years even after I'm gone, do somebody go, "Hey man, if you really want to get into comedy, check out this thing Ryan Davis did." Or- what about a special? Oh, that's what we're working on. We're shooting in uh, July in Houston. Okay. Why Houston? Uh, Houston is where it's the first place I ever sold tickets at. Really? Yeah, man. I um, Whenever the social media stuff took off, I was like, I wonder if I could sell tickets. And I I picked Houston. I went to, you know, they show you all the analytics or whatever. There was New York. There was Chicago and Houston. And I was like, don't, uh, don't want to do New York or Chicago. Why not? <laughs> Uh, for the first time out, New York is just a different animal, man. You, uh, New York has a reputation, and Chicago has a reputation of, if you're not ready, don't you bring your ass up here. That's real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Houston it was. And it's not that Houston... I, and if I'm, you know, being from the South, I felt like I probably... There was a comfort level of maybe I could relate to them better. Got you. Yeah, so we did Houston, drove 17 hours, me and my girl Paris Sachet. Uh, 17 hours to Houston. I ain't had no money. All staying in one hotel because it was like I, because at this point I quit my job, everything, mm-hmm. and put my all in the social media. There was no money. Like if this show didn't work out, I wasn't. I was living in Houston now. <laughs> like that's just what <laughs> it was. In your car. Yeah, there was no coming back. And then uh, I rented out a comedy club, and social media was new. So the comedy club, the guy who ran it was like, I'll let you rent it out for $300. He just thought he was going to get a quick 300 off me. And then, like, my friends and family will show up. But then, like, 300 tickets sold in, like, two days. And he was like, who are you? Mm-hmm. And I was like, why are you asking me? I don't know what you mean. He was like, dude, this place is sold out. I made more money in that day than I had ever made in my life in a wow. month, like, in a three-month span. Wow. And I was just like, oh, we here. Why not North Carolina? Is Paris, Paris not from North Carolina, is she? Nah, she's from uh, D.C. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's 22, though. Yeah, nah, that's been my road dog from day one. Mm-hmm. Day one. I I attach my career to uh, Paris, man. I tell people all the time, man. She, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll be a household name someday. I love that. I was talking to um, Jess Pam, another comedian, and she was saying she does this whole thing like women comedians are funny. Yes. Because people have this misperception that Women comics aren't funny. It's so dumb that people, people, like, I don't mind people having a preference. I don't mind people having their prejudices in that way, you know what I mean? Because there's something that triggered with you that made you feel that way. But how do you say that when you know that some more Adele Givens and the Monique existed? Like, how do you know? Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes. So where did you get that from? Who who, who put that in? Shout out to Ida. I love Ida. Um, what made Melanie you feel Camacho. that way? Yeah, we got like women who dominated in the Def Jam era. So what what happened between then and now that makes you go, well, women aren't funny? Like like Paris exists, Ty Davis, Just Niche, my girl Kelly Kales. There's so Chelsea many women. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many women. That, man. My girl Kelly Kells and my girl Ty Davis, I'm telling you, you don't want to follow them. A lot of dudes ain't want, like, you see them on the ticket, you be like, hey, can I go before mm-hmm. them? Mm-hmm. I just don't want that kind of pressure on me. Niche, too. So when us comics know that about these women, and then I hear the general public go, women aren't funny, I was like, when's the last time you went to a comedy club? Because I'm, I'm starting to think you don't go out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just some massage. Like, like I said, I went to go see Ali Wong at Radio City last year. She Hilarious. A dog. You yeah. know what I mean? And the thing about funny, funny is 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 bigger than gender, right? Yeah. Because you either laughing or you not. Mm-hmm. If it's funny, it's funny. It's funny. That's it. <laughs> it's it's mind boggling to me. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, people are people want to have their implicit biases, so you just gotta let them have it, man. They people just want to hate in today's time. That's right. For real. 
Like it doesn't matter. Like Country Wayne put on a uh, social media that he was starting this tour and he was talking, you know, got it out the mud. I was like, talk your shit. Somebody was like, man, he still ain't gonna let you open for him. I'm like, I'm not an opening act. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, not. Are you, are you celebrating him just yeah. because they want you to hold Yeah. Him? I was like, this, me and Wayne been tight for like five, six years now. No, but see, that's one reason I really fuck with you, man, because you're not afraid to celebrate other people. I, I saw, do. I saw yeah. what you said about 85 South Show, and I was like, yo, Ryan is absolutely, positively correct. Yo, these dudes are booking the forum. Mm -hmm. 30,000 people. And no one's saying <clears throat> anything. I'm like, when did we get here to yeah. where we're not celebrating people who are accomplishing great things? Everybody needs to be talking about them. Yeah. They should be turning down everybody. Everybody should be pitching them something or something. This is remarkable. I guess because I'm so old that I've been around. So I've been like Carlos and Chico. DC yeah. are my guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was using them on my TV shows nine, ten years ago. So I appreciate where they are. I watched them Man, come they up got to that it. level. You know what I mean? Boy, they were they were grinding. They're killing it. Man, they were at a cafeteria table yes. with, <laughs> with, with mics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before like that's how eighty five South got started, man. And they where they got to now, I don't know, it bugs me that we don't, you know, celebrate the people who who put the work in and you see the growth and you see and they're good. They're yeah. just good. Yeah. Phenomenal. Facts, yeah. They're Phenomenal. just good. Even as individuals, I love when they link together. Right. But to see them do solo stuff, too. It's, it's, it's insane, man. And we're witnessing that right now. And then there's not a whole lot of chatter about it, in my opinion. But I, I wonder if it's because of, of cause a lot of people are still so used to seeing things through the traditional ways of breaking, like TV and stand-up specials on cable networks. So being that they're so digital, people don't appreciate it like they should. Yeah, yeah I think, well, I think just social media hurts that. It hurts stardom. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. won't see stars the way that we used to see them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right now you can spend $10 to get all the music. <laughs> that, that's insane yeah. when you think about how we came up, right? Yeah. yeah. No, you get ten dollars, but whenever you had to spend fifteen for the album, it meant something to word you. Word up, word up. It meant something to you. It doesn't you. mean the same now. It doesn't mean the same but now. But I tell you what, I'm, how mo how likely were you to sit with that album when you paid your money for the one album? You would. Yeah. You keep you, you, even if it's whack, you keep looking yeah. into it like, nah, this shit can't be whack. I yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get the songs I like off yeah. of this at the very least. <laughs> There isn't that in the same way works with social media and comedy and stardom. Like, you can be famous but not a star. You can be popular and not a star. There's a guy named Jason Banks that does social media comedy, right? There's a girl who redoes his videos. She got verified on TikTok before he did. <laughs> That's crazy. She got 3 million mm -hmm. followers just from doing, doing his, his content. So maybe he need to ghostwrite for her. <laughs> no. Nah, I'm saying there's no there's no pressure to be original. There's no pressure yeah. to be great. It's everybody can. Now don't get me wrong, social media is going to make more millionaires than ever before. This is an amazing thing. There's a lot of people who are going to change the fortunes of their family forever because of this. But it hurts quality. You know, one of the things about TV and movies and stuff is people got to audition. You got to beat out. You got to be the best for this. You ain't got to be the best for your page. This is you. You know what I mean? And you can be as bad as you want to be. And people, if people mm -hmm. rock with you, they stay in with you. There's no incentive to be great anymore. I'd rather have all the, I'd rather have people in culture. Cause I, there's some people that got movies, some people that got TV shows. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, but at the same time, our, when people are gravitating toward people now, it's more toward a personality mm -hmm. or looks. Man, if you if you really good looking and you all you got to do is get on social media and just do what everybody else is doing, you'll blow. You know, I because know. Because people, because, oh, yeah, Morris Chestnut. You know, I know. But yeah, I see you. I see you over there, bro. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga's stupid, bro. <laughs> you know, he, uh... Nah, it's that's just what it is, man. And I and I because there's no I feel like social media should go to you can only follow a hundred people. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Tell me the signs behind that. You can only follow up because that'll make people earn your follow. If you mm. only had a hundred, mm. you'd really pay attention. Like that way when your cousin is like, follow me, he's like, ah, I only got a hundred. Mm. You know what I mean? Somebody is like, they ain't made content in forever or they, they content start falling off. Nah. I only got a hundred. I'll find somebody else to replace this. 
But because you can follow infinite amount of people, there's no incentive for people to be better at the craft. Damn. That's real. Yeah. So that's why I be telling people, man, I, I be putting that pressure on myself. When I say I'm great, it ain't I'm talking, you know what I mean? I ain't okay. downing nobody else. I got to live up to what I'm talking about because there's no other place to be pressured. Now, yeah, now Mount Rushmore of comedy, right? This generation and of all time. Okay. Uh, this generation, like, are we talking just all things comedy or just stand up? All things comedy. Ooh, all things comedy, that's a all tough time. One. Uh, Eddie Murphy. This all. This is. Oh yeah, all time. Okay. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Uh, Adam Sandler. Mm-hmm. Um. This is where it gets tough. Um. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Dave. Dave Chappelle. Hmm. I might have to take Dave out. Oh. I'm gonna take Dave out. Chris. Gotta have a God. Chris Rock on there. Chris and Dave gotta be on there. Bro. Yeah. Well, you can only have one. So who's not, who, if, so if who's, not who's Dave, who? Oh, Chris yeah, good, not Ryan. Dave. He said Chris. You gotta put Chris in the spot of Dave. Okay. So Eddie, Chris. Who you say? Adam, Adam Sandler. Yeah. Adam Sandler. Huh. You know, sheesh. Comedy. All comedy. Why is Dave not making this list? You put Adam Sandler above Dave. Dave, 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 Dave is one of, like, unarguably one of the greatest stand-ups of all time. Mm-hmm. So is Chris Rock. And I like Chris Rock's catalog better than Dave's. I agree with that. Yeah. No, nah, I agree with so, that. So, uh, yeah. I agree with that. So, so we just, so we just talking stand-up. No, nah, because if we just talking stand-up, then Dave's in there. But we talking all comedy. That's how Adam Sandler is in there. Look at Adam Sandler movie catalog. Right. What well, Chappelle got Chappelle is show. Yeah. yeah, Chappelle show is amazing. Chappelle show plus the same. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, the Chappelle show is amazing. Wasn't in Living Color amazing? Was. I mean, look at what Jamie Foxx has done comedically. You yeah. know, Jamie Foxx show mm-hmm. was a hit. This yeah. dude got movies. Yeah. Damon Wayans, well, yeah. all he's done in yeah. comedy. I mean, yeah. shoot, even Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Ice Cube ain't no Ice Cube it ain't what he done. But I said in comedy. But this is this is how funny the game is now. One of the biggest most successful people in the comedy game movie-wise is a rapper. Yeah. That's that? Ice, Ice Cube. Cube. Oh, Ice Cube. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, it's way. I don't feel like black comedians get the opportunity in movies as much as they should, but we'll talk about that some other time. Uh, the last person, give me, give me some more. Some more. Not mad at that at all. I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. I think that is the best female comedian ever. I would concur. Yeah. <clears throat> I love and some more. Actually, I, I, you got to put some more up there, man. To I just, feel like Jess Hilarious is her com- comedy daughter. Man, I, I love Jess, man. I, I want to see Jess win all the time, man. She That's will. another one. That's another one. But she's winning, but to the extent she's doing theaters, and I feel like nobody even is recognizing that. They you know all, I mean? all going to get their justice. Yeah. Jess, so, DC, Chico, Carlos is coming. Yeah. So, you know, comedy is male dominated, and it was really male dominated when Samore was doing it. She was headlining these tours, even with, you know, DL Hughley and these other guys mm-hmm. on the tour. That's, that's insane. Mm-hmm. Hosted Def Jam, hosted Comic View. Man, she. You know what I mean? And I feel like Hollywood always fronted on Samoa. Always yeah. fronted Even on her. Even to this day, Samoa should be on somebody's always. TV show doing Listen, something. Listen, don't let me get the TV show because she on there. <laughs> as soon as you I get have it. You to beat me to it. <laughs> 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 she there, look, I get it. She on there. I love Samoa. Yeah, Samoa. Like, yeah, nah, that's that's Rushmore. That's definitely Rushmore. I like that. So comedy. Chris, Eddie, Samoa, yeah. Adam Sandler. Yeah. I'd have put Dave over Adam, but I feel you. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm not mad it's at just it. Adam, man. He, that catalog is too, and then he's got you know Saturday Night Live on top of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's, I don't want to uh, take away from what he's done, man, and the amount of friends he put on. He put his boys on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just seeing what he did. Nah, he's he's Rushmore. Dave can knock him out if you know. Dave go out and do some other stuff. I mean, you look at guys like Eddie and Robin Williams. Those 
Like, Robin Williams deserved to be there, but I got Eddie there. As two people are in the same lane, yeah. I kind of don't put two people in the same lane you know, on the Rushmore. I'd be interested to see how Eddie's uh, stand-up is going to be. Now I don't want to see it. Back to doing stand-up. The funny part is I think he'll be perfectly fine. I think he should do, like, remember when Mike Tyson did that one-man show? Yeah. I think Eddie should do something like that. We don't that. know. I, I mean, it could nah. be amazing, though. Nah. I'm looking forward to it. I think I think you're underestimating the greatness of that dude. I, comedy I is hard. coming to America, too. Uh, <laughs> I think he's basing it off of coming to America. Eddie didn't write that, so you blaming it? You blaming That's him for somebody else's work? Who should we blame? Uh, who wrote it? I don't know. <laughs> I know who wrote it, but wrote uh, it? <laughs> I think I know too. But I don't want to say because I don't want to be wrong. Yeah, oh, give man. me the new generation. Who's the new? The new? The new? Uh, new right now. Rushmore. Uh, I put 85 South. You got to put their heads together on the Rushmore, man. Okay. Yeah, what they're doing is phenomenal. You got to put Jess. You you got to put you got to put Wayne. Yeah, Country Wayne, man is. And then there's then there's me. Put I, yourself. Yeah, leaving me off. It wasn't you know. I I really just didn't name me to be humble. In the beginning, <laughs> but I was gonna name me first, but I left the last spot left for me. Yeah, I haven't seen, have seen Wayne's new stand up. Oh no, nah, Wayne Wayne has gotten Wayne has got really good, man. But he works hard. I gotta but he it. works hard. I respect hard. that. He He's got three working. web cool series going at one time, mm-hmm. every day. That type of work ethic, man. Ain't nobody working harder than him. So and I he don't... embraces who he is too. Like everything man. that you could use against him, he just yep. That's Joke why, I, hey man, you got all them kids. I sure do, and I take care of all of them. Child support <laughs> killing me. Skits. He just, he just go, he just go. What about Andrew Schultz? Andrew Schultz is my guy. Mm-hmm. Love Andrew, man. I wish I could have did the tour. He invited me out to start it out in uh, the Texas with him, man, and uh, I couldn't do it because I was on my tour. That dude is phenomenal. It's funny that you brought him up because he should be up there. I would put Andrew on my Mount Rushmore. Yeah, he definitely generation. should be up there. But I was answering quick because Envy was like, all right, all right, who, who, who today? I was like, damn, I, let me think. But nah, so, uh, but well, Andrew, go, yeah, Andrew well, was Make phenomenal. sure y'all check out Ryan Davis. He's on that Caroline's. Mount Rushmore at Caroline's this That's weekend. You right. will not regret it. You'll only regret it if you don't come. I'm going to come on to the it. Friday show. I'm the, I think I'm going to come on Friday. No, I'm going to come to one, too. You can go to carolines.com for tickets. That's going to be Friday and Saturday, 7 p.m. and 9.45 on Friday, and 7 p.m. and 9.45 on Saturday. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just, coming it, Friday, Greg. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, Greg, I'm definitely coming this weekend, too, just because you said you're the greatest stand-up of this generation. Yeah. And I, like, I know you're funny. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the stand-up yet. I want to see. All right. But when I do it, I need you to come right back on here and be mm-hmm. like, all right, that little nigga wasn't lying. I'm going to give it up. All right. You know? But, all now, right. but I just let you know. If so, I ain't worried about that. There, no no yeah, <laughs> there is no other side. Yeah, there is no other side. There is no other side. No worries. It's Ryan Davis. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Oh, give your social media and all oh, yeah. that. Uh, Ryan Davis Comedy on Instagram. Uh, or just type in Ryan Davis Comedian in Google. It'll give you everything, man. And Thank go you to guys. carolines.com, man, to buy tickets for the Friday night show, 7 p.m., 9.45. Saturday show, 7 p.m., 9.45. This weekend at Caroline. That's right. It's Ryan Davis. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.